Now in this experiment, we're going to be measuring the specific heat capacity of a metal. This one here is aluminium, and you might have seen something similar at school. Now there's an equation that says the energy supplied is equal to the mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. And in order to work out the value of C, the specific heat capacity, we need to know the mass of this piece of metal, we need to know the change in temperature and also the energy supplied. Now, the change in temperature can be measured using a thermometer and that actually just fits in the hole in the top of the block like that. In order to supply energy, we're going to be using this immersion heater and we do that by immersing the heater in the big hole. And so this is a fairly standard setup. But how much energy is actually transferred to it? Well, there's an equation that says energy is equal to the power multiplied by the time. So we can record the time using a stopwatch over here and the power supplied to this, we can actually work this out from the current and the voltage or potential difference. And we can measure both of these using either an ammeter or a voltmeter. So if we know the amount of energy supplied and we know the change in temperature, we can then plot that on a graph a bit like this. And then when we get some data points, we can use these to actually work out the value of that specific heat capacity. So uh, in this experiment over here, um, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to measure the mass using a mass balance. So I'm gonna turn it on. Um, this one over here, uh, we can adjust the unit. At the moment it's in grams, which is really useful. And so if I take this block, it's about a kilogram, but just to confirm the mass, um, I'm going to zero it so it's zeroed and if I put this on top the reading is 1005 grams so 1.005 kilograms roughly a kilogram but not exact so I've got the mass of this block what I'm then going to do is just put that to one side I'm going to actually do this on a heat proof mat uh, and this just means that as this gets warmer and warmer, it's not going to burn the table underneath. So I have my block here. Um, in terms of the circuit, well, I've got it actually plugged into this power supply. Um, at the moment, when I turn this on, it's a reading of about 10 volts. So we've, we've put up fairly high. The exact number doesn't matter. And the first part of the circuit um, is going to go from the power supply, and we've plugged it into DC. Um, it's going to go through an ammeter in series and the first thing I'm going to do is just check this is working. So if I just put it in there, I just want to see there's actually a reading on the ammeter. If I turn that on, we have a reading of 3.35. So we know the circuit's working and then we're going to put the, uh, the voltmeter in parallel across the heater. So I'm just going to plug it in like so. So this is a setup, we've got the block, the heater, it's connected up here to the power pack, but I've not turned it on just yet. And we've got my stopwatch over here. Now, the other thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna put the thermometer in the hole, but you can actually see it's not a great fit. And that means we might not be actually registering the temperature of the block. So what I'm gonna do is just put a small amount of water in this hole to basically fill up that air gap. I've added a small amount of water using a pipette and if I just put this in, we can see that fills up the hole like that. Now you could use oil or you could use some special kind of conducting paste, um, but that just gets a little bit messy. So water is gonna be good enough for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to record the time every minute for 10 minutes. And what I'm going to do is as soon as I turn this on, I'm going to press start on the stopwatch and then we can then record the temperature on the thermometer. And it's really important just to note that it's always good to keep your eye level at the same height as the reading you're taking on the thermometer. So hopefully you can pick that up on the camera. 
So we're now going to leave this for the next 10 minutes, taking readings of the temperature every minute.
So now we've got some data, we've had time and temperature, and we can use the values on the ammeter and the voltmeter to work out the power. We can see that the actual temperature now is about 37, so not too hot, but just be careful that these blocks, after you've been heating them up, they do get hotter. Pretty straightforward, but I've seen many people pick up hot blocks before. So now we've got some data, we can do some analysis, plot it on a graph, and actually work out, in this case, the specific heat capacity for aluminium.